deal more than a great deal at the Hyundai Season of More event going on now. Offers end April 2nd. Welcome back out to Dodger Stadium as we wrap up the Cactus League edition of spring training in the Freeway Series. The Dodgers took the opener at the Big A and the Halos answered back last night by the victory, or by the final, I should say, by four to one. And uh, we'll see what the Angels can do today as long as everyone stays healthy. That's all that matters. Still some decisions to be made as well because of the roster. And uh, if we get any word on that uh, before the end of the game, if not, Angels live post game will certainly have with Patrick O'Neill and Jose Moda. Let's take a look at Mike Sosha's final Cactus League lineup, and uh, it's missing Ian Kinsler. He's dealing with a little sore groin, so he took last night off, tonight off, and got the off day tomorrow. So hopefully he's fine for opening day on Thursday. Cozart Trout up to the top third of the order. Pujols will DH tonight. Simmons is short. Calhoun and right. Marte gets a start at first base. He's a guy that uh, we're trying to figure out whether or not he's going to make the team or not since he's out of options. Valbuena gets a start at third and Martin Maldonado batting ninth. He will do the catching as they take on the 31 year old left hander native of Incheon, South Korea. His name Hinjin Ryu. Ryu is always throwing the ball well against the Angels. Five and nine record last season. Threw the ball pretty well against the Angels in Campbellback Ranch. My go to is to be successful against Ryu is make sure you don't chase that changeup. Make sure it's in the strike zone and turn on that heater inside. He'll throw the changeup, fade that one away, bring it in the zone, and when he throws that fastball in, be ready and turn on it. So Kisler's absence. Zach Kozart will lead things off. He's got the uh, little pant legs pulled up. You know, that's usually done to a reserve for guys that are struggling, trying to change the mojo. He's been swinging the bat well. Yeah, and, well, he's been swinging about well with the socks there, so he's keeping it there. Might you know, well. baseball players, they're not superstitious at all. Never. Sometimes not allowed, apparently, <laughs> to be superstitious. No balls, two strikes. Ryu making his fourth start of the spring, two and one with an ERA just over eight. You see Kozart's numbers. Ryu last year, 25 games, 24 starts. Five and nine with a 3.77 ERA. Not unusual to see Kozart behind in some counts too, and he had some good numbers last year in the National League as far as with two strikes, 263 batting average when he had two strikes on him. Best in the National League in that category. Ryu is one, two. A dribbler foul. And well, said to do it again. It's that fastball in again. And, and Ryu has done a nice job as far as changeup going away. I'll throw that fastball inside. I'll throw that curveball down and in also. Really, when you look at his spring training numbers, until that game he had against the, the Angels at Camelback Ranch, he really had struggled himself. Is that breaking ball? This is two and two. Ryu got to the big leagues 2013 with the Dodgers. Back to back 14 win seasons in 13 and 14, but then the shoulder blew out. Had to have surgery. The stall of 15 and most of 16. And that is ripped out the left field. Matt Kemp's there. We'll put it away. That ball squared up. But right to Matt Kemp for the first out. As we take a look at the Dodgers on the defensive side of things tonight, it's Kemp. Peterson and Puig in the outfield from left to right. The infield with Forsyth, Seeger, Hernandez, and Ballinger, the same infield we've seen for all three games. Grandall back behind the plate tonight. And, and Bellinger at first base. Last year, we look at the number of games, 83 of them. Also played some left field, some center field, and a right field, but settling in that position, he is a very good, smooth fielding first baseman. So here is Trout. One for two last night with a single. He also reached on a catcher's interference, the first catcher's interference he's ever reached on in his professional career, at least at the major league level, whether it's spring training or regular season. He's done some firsts in spring training this year. First time he had a home run over the batter's eye in Tempe Diablo Stadium also this year. But didn't you say that anybody could do that in spring training because it's Tempe, the thin air, and all that stuff? <laughs> I guess so. I guess it's possible. You were saying you could do it left-handed? Yeah, well, you know, even, <laughs> yeah, probably left-handed. I'll do my Bo Jackson impression. Just go up, pat, 
left handed hit it out. Two that, balls, one strike. It's that good change up. I do have a question for you. You just brought up Bo Jackson, and it has nothing to do with the Angels or the Dodgers. The Royals are celebrating their 50th year this year mm -hmm. in existence, and they're doing that the, the countdown. And I think it's a fan's yes. countdown. Where would you put Bo on the all time list of all time Royals? I, I think if you, you, when you do that, you have to think of numbers. And I, I know he, I think he was like seventh or eighth all time according to the fan vote. I would have to say he would be in the top 50, but I wouldn't have him in the top 10. Gotcha. Although now I would, I would, I would he'd say, be off the charts, right? I wouldn't say that to him. <laughs> <laughs> this one out to right center field. You wouldn't say that to him. I would say you said it. <laughs> I was just kind of just kind of curious, yeah. you know, because you you can break down things and. Uh, it's all subjective, right? But especially when you're getting someone's opinion or a up fan up vote. Up mm -hmm. up but uh, just because you brought up Bo, I, I think if you just mentioned athleticism, forget it. Top. I mean, yeah, yeah. Number one, yeah. hands down. But you play with him, and I just wanted to see what your yeah. opinion was of it. As far as highlights, number one number also. One. <laughs> but I know when we're up in Oakland, I think they're going to be celebrating their 50th anniversary yeah. as the Oakland Athletics Big ceremony on, on Friday night, as a matter of fact, there. Up to takes inside. The Dodgers celebrating 60th anniversary this season. A lot of celebrations. Yes. It's a pretty good song, too. Had the perfect song for the drive up today. Fog hat, slow ride. Slow. Well, you you are back in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> Up to one for three last night with a single little run scored. All four runs for the Angels last night coming into third inning. Gets a starter, Rich Hill. Pujols with the bases clearing double. Simmons with a single. Lone Dodger run coming in the ninth. Andrew Toll's home run. Yeah, Ryu will pitch inside. It's not overpowering, but he'll pitch inside. We saw that with Rich Hill, special out of his fastball's upper part of the strike zone, followed with that big curveball. Two quick outs to start this one. 2-2 two -two count on Upton. This one's bounce foul. That's Rich Hill got the start for the Dodgers last night. Matt Shoemaker for the Angels, and he was spectacular in his final spring tune-up. Mike Soch, as we said in the open, naming Matt Shoemaker the number three starter. So he will go Saturday afternoon in Oakland. That's after Garrett Richards and Tyler Skaggs. No other news as far as number four, number five. Like I said, there's still some decisions to be made yes. as far as the roster is concerned. Let's see what they uh, end up deciding after the game. Dodgers also, I mean, as a matter of fact, today they uh, designated for assignment Trace Thompson. Well, I think when he's healthy, he is a very, very good major league player. 3 2 now. Pujols on deck. There's Albert. Just a beautiful night. Unlike last night, we had the gale force winds blowing across. Temperatures dipping down. Tonight, very little breeze. Game time temperature at 70. Another 3-2. Little jam shot flare out to shallow left. Kemp has to come on. He's underneath. It puts it away, and the Angels are down in order. We'll head to the bottom of the first. J.C. Ramirez on the mound for the Angels for scoreless.
This starting lineup for the Dodgers, very similar looking lineup. We've seen the uh, previous two nights with Taylor tonight DHing. Seeger at short, Puig at right, Bellinger at first base, Kemp at left. Grandall back behind the plate after a night off. Peterson is in center field. Forsyth at third base and Kike Hernandez at second base. Justin Turner is going to be out for a little while with that broken wrist that he suffered in uh, spring training. And that uh, lineup of the Dodgers taking on the 29-year-old Nicaragua native. His name is J.C. Ramirez. Well, he really settled into that starting rotation. 11-game winner last season. My go-to's for J.C. to be successful is don't shy away from contact and bend it like Beckham with that curveball and slider combo. He has a power fastball, but it's in the lower part of the strike zone. And he's told me a number of times, I like to get some quick outs on the ground. I know we're so used to hearing swing and misses, forcing fastballs upstairs, but he can get a lot of ground ball outs. And with this defense, why wouldn't you? No balls, two strikes. Twenty-seven games, twenty-four starts for JC. Last season before being shut down, eleven and ten, and a four point one five ERA. Taylor fouls it off, keeps his plate appearance alive. Nice play in the stance. And that's why he bring the glove. Getting ready for the regular season as a fan also. You know, JC had that injection in his elbow. Feels great. Everyone's asked, well, maybe possibility would he be at better out of the bullpen? No. He's much better as a starter. He's thrown the ball very, very well also, and it gives him a chance to bounce back a lot better. Down goes Taylor. Fastball blown right by him. One down. Check out the Angels defensively behind Ramirez. The outfield. Very and up to Trout Calhoun from left to right. It's Valbuena at third. Simmons is short. Cozart at second, Marte at first base, and Maldonado behind the plate. And Mike Trout out in center field said in spring training he's going to try to be a better defensive center fielder. We saw that on display last night coming in on that baseball with the catch. First rule, not a catch, but eventually overturned. Seeger 0 for 3 last night with a fly ball and two ground outs. We mentioned last night talking about uh, the arm issue that uh, Corey's had, uh, had especially last year. Quite any, any chances he, we've seen so far in this series, he's looked fine. Mm -hmm. you know. When we talk a lot about the young talent around baseball. This, this young man is at the top of that. Will choke up on that bat, but super quick on pitches, especially fastballs. Three balls, one strike. Yasiel Puig on deck. 3 1. A bouncer to second. Kozart's got it on two big hops. Two down. Mentioned Trout's catch last night. Happened in the first inning. Here it is. You see how deep he plays, how quickly he was able to come in on that baseball with the dive and the catch. First rule thought to hit that outfield grass, but Mike Trout pointed in right away, said, I made the play, did so. Ruled a catch. That's a good fastball, Victor. That movement. You see, it's at the lower part of the strike zone. You got a ground ball out with that fastball. How deep Mike Trout's playing out in the outfield. That tells you he's more comfortable coming in on the baseball than necessarily going back on it. Driven out to deep left center field. This one doesn't matter where Trout's playing. It's 1 0 Dodgers. Puig jumping all over that 0 1 fastball. Well, last night, Matt Schumacher got the best of Yasiel Puig. He didn't want to go too deep into account. He was going to be aggressive early on. And this time, gets a fastball that kind of ran on that inside part of the plate in that nitro zone for Yasiel Puig and drives that one out to left center field. Career 
high 28 home runs last season for Puig. One oh count on Cody Bellinger. National League Rookie of the Year. One for two last night with a double and a walk. Turned out at third base trying to stretch that double into a triple. Nice job by Calhoun and Simmons on the relay. Out toward left center field, slicing away from Trout. Got a beat on it. He'll haul it in on the track for the third out. But the Dodgers strike first. Puig with a solo shot with two outs here in the first. Dodgers on top as we head to the second. Pujols, Simmons, and Calhoun for the Angels. Ryu with a one, two, three, first three fly ball outs. Now we're DHing tonight. That'll happen periodically throughout the year. Uh, he's going into 2018 as the primary first baseman. Especially when you think about playing those first four games up in Oakland. Albert likes to, when he's DH and swing the bat in a tunnel or, or a batting cage, but you would have to do that out in center field. That's why he's going to try to play all four games in the field up at Oakland. Besides, he says he loves to play defense. He likes to try to prevent some runs here and there just to take the focus completely off swinging the bat. And his batting average much higher than that focus playing first base. You see that 311 versus 264 as a DH. Hold off speed away. Still at a no two count. Ready for the season to start? Yes. Everyone is down there in the dugout. I was talking to a number of players there. They're, they're ready to go. What point in spring training does everyone say, you know what, All right, enough of this stuff. Bellinger's going to call this one in. I think when it comes down for position players, whenever they feel the timing is there, hitting-wise. Pitchers, as soon as they get to maybe a starter, get that sixth or seventh inning, at least get up six or seven times, you're ready to go. And this year, this, the conversation down there in Tempe, it was a lot quicker. Obviously, the season's starting sooner. Same amount of games, but position players 
only had about three or four days of workout before the actual game started, which was unusual for them. So getting their timing down swing was a little bit harder early on in spring. The reason for that change, too, although the new collective bargaining agreement kicked off last year, the first of a five-year deal, the, uh, there are a couple of little things that were worked out don't take effect until this year. It didn't take effect until this year, one of them being the extra off days throughout the course of the regular season, four additional off days, and that's why the, right the season from a, from a calendar perspective got lengthened out. The games are starting a little bit earlier. Exactly. Oh, Anderson Simmons earlier today when we were, I asked him about, were you ready to go to start the season? I said, I just want to hit a baseball hard, and I can take <laughs> it on home. I said, well, I'm looking down. At, it wasn't quite hard there, but it landed in the outfield, so he could say that was a line drive base hit. <laughs> Boy, he's really turned into a very good offensive player. I look like a line drive, right? Yeah. It'll look that way in the box score. Mm -hmm. Can you still get a box score in the paper? Hernandez can't come up with this. A nice effort by Kike. Simmons is going to turn and head to third. The throw is not cut off, but Simmons is able to stay on the base. So back-to-back -back flare singles for the Angels and runners at the corners with one out. That was pretty good base running by Anderson Simmons. They had to make sure they got through the infield and then challenge Peterson, who charged that one well. Pretty good throw from center field. But that's what you're going to see from, from the Angels this season. It was hands out over the plate for Cole. Even though that wasn't a, a bullet up the middle, he's still able to get his arms extended, fought that off for a single just by Hernandez, playing second base a lot this year now for the Dodgers with Justin Turner going to be out for a while. Good base running there. So Jeffrey Marte will come up with an opportunity to uh, at the very least tie this one. Marte the starting third baseman last night batting in the number nine spot ended up going over three. See his numbers from last season. 45 games he got into, and he'll roll this one through the left side, and the Angels have tied this one up at one. A lot of times you'll see contrasts in teams. The Dodgers rely a lot on the long ball. They score their run. That was a big fight from Yasiel Puig. A run here for the Angels on three singles. This went up, elevated. That's what you're trying to do in an RBI situation as a hitter. You're looking for a pitch elevated that you can hit on the line or at the very least and hit in the air. Sam lines it into the outfield pass. Seeger for an RBI single for Marte. There's Luis Valbuena. First and second, one out. Tied at one. Sixty-nine percent of his hits after July 1st last year were extra base hits. That led the majors in that category for Luis Valbuena. Sixty-nine percent of his hits, extra base hits. One ball, one strike. That's got to be the most frustrating thing as a pitcher when you feel like you've made two quality pitches to both Simmons and Calhoun in on the hands, and all of a sudden they turn out to be flares and just beyond the reach of a defender. The last thing you want to do is have this kind of snowball on you into a, a multi-run. And been there before where all of a sudden some negative thought creeps into your mind that you're going to make a mistake and eventually the hitter is going to square one up against you. And before too long you're giving up a three or four run spot in an inning so this is certainly a good count now for Valbuena to try to take advantage of that a little bit high just in case uh, John Lipka the home plate umpire needed some help as far as the location is concerned Luis helping to help helping out right there you see that was above the letters crossing the plate and that's 
exactly what Luis said. Yes, it was above the letters crossing the plate. Front of the plate. 3 1 pitch. Good rip. Foul back. Long look there for Cole over at Dino Evil. Is he going on a 3 2 count with one out? With a left handed batter at the plate. You better get a good jump. That's a clear throw for Grandall to third base if there's no contact made. Runners don't go. This little one hopper to Seeger. Hernandez jump throw to first base. Bellinger can't handle it. Calhoun's going to come in to score on the throwing error. And it's a 2 1 Angels lead. Catcher number 12, Martin Maldonado. The way the defense would set up, they, they go a long way. In the throw, all in one motion, try to get to the base and then quickly jump and throw to first base. Sometimes when you have those shifts on in an infield, it makes it more difficult as a middle infield to get to the base to be able to turn a double play. That was a long run over there for Hernandez. Fielder's choice for Val Buena, no RBI. Hernandez gets charged with the error. Maldonado behind the count at 0 and 1. Number nine hitter. Night off last night, Rene Rivera is the starting catcher for the Angels. More than likely uh, the backup. That's a good thing with Dino Eilber there at third base coach. He's, he's watching that throw, so he's moving down the line to be able to communicate with Cole Calhoun to be able to walk in there and score the second run of the inning. Because as a runner, you're running towards third base, and you're trying to pick up your third base coach to determine if it's going to be a wide throw. Did so, and able to score. And down goes Maldonado on three pitches. The inning comes to an end, but not before the Angels put two on the board on three hits and an error. It's 2-1 Halos as we head to the bottom of the second. It's the Volkswagen. Angels every home game this year with 2018 Angels season seeds. For more information, just uh, give them a call at 888-796-HALO or go to angels.com slash season seats and become a season seat holder. The home schedule begins on Monday. And there's a couple of Dodger veterans looking on, Sandy Koufax, Tommy Lasorda. Had a chance to talk to Sandy Koufax a couple of years ago, and it was so much fun. He loves talking baseball and we know Tommy does every second of every day Sandy's looked the exact same mm -hmm. way for the last 25 years he looks yes. awesome yes 
He looks like he throw, drop a curveball on you right now. Oh, there's, <laughs> there's no question. And standing O for, uh, or from Sandy when Puig hit the home run of the first inning as Kemp takes outside. Boy, he's a young player. Anytime I saw anybody like a Sandy Koufax or, or a Don Dreisel, anybody around, I would immediately go up and start talking baseball because you get so much invaluable information from them on how to not only succeed at the le major league level, but to stay there. Calhoun underneath this one will squeeze it for the first down. You know what the, I don't know if it's a sad thing, but with so much video and the access that MLB.TV gives you to archive games and great moments and the like, it seems like to me, and maybe, uh, maybe I'm wrong as far as my read is concerned, young players today are more focused on now, the here and now, versus the guys from yesteryear. I mean, I, I, there's been a number of times, whether it's in this ballpark, our ballpark, any ballpark across country, you see you know, the, the likes of a Sandy Koufax mm -hmm. and, and walking through. Yes. And you don't see any player recognize him or want to talk to him. It, it, it's just kind of a weird thing. You, that's how I grew up, just like yeah. you. You see someone like that that's put up numbers, and you just want to just shoot the breeze. And they want to talk they yeah. want to tell stories yeah you would have to literally run away from them yeah. to stop i i when don drysdale was alive I, I i often every time i would run into myself i credit him for turning around my career i had a conversation with him for an hour and a half about pitching and everything he told me came to focus and and i, I used that information to get better and I, I, he was about as intimidating as a pitcher sandy koufax was also intimidating in a different way Drysdale was was big, mm -hmm. but Koufax is intimidated with that curveball and fastball. And remember, early in his career, he was a little bit wild on the mound yeah. too. So you never were real comfortable in the batter's box. Grandall with the uh, one-out single brings up Jock Peterson. You know, when you look at Mike Trout, now Mike Trout is one of those guys though. Will always talk to somebody he remembered, or heard of, or certainly when you remember. Tory Hunter and now Albert Pujols, he's asking questions every second of every day to get better. That's how you get better. Because you can read and look at scouting reports and video, but the guys that have done it successfully, you learn so much from them. I, I think it's great that, you know, the Angels, a lot of teams do it. Virtually every team does it when they bring the players from their history back to spring training as guest instructors. Just so that, one, you can give young players a look at the history of the ball club and who these guys are. And they don't have to be big names, but guys that made an impact on the franchise. Sandy's obviously his name just kind of, he's more of a, not just Dodgers, it's, just, it's baseball in general. It's an all-time great. But I think that more often than not, you get lost on, you know, okay, you get focused on those guys that come in for your organization in spring training, but all the other guys seem to kind of get lost in the shuffle. And it's just... I know it's a shame. Maybe I'm kind of partial because my old man played for 16 years, and I'm, I never get tired of the stories. I mean, no. he, I, he's constantly telling different types of stories. But he's got a perfect Don Drysdale story. Don't get me started on this one. But yeah. 86 when Gene Mock makes the walk out yeah. there to take Mike Witt. Dad sitting with Don Drysdale. And I can't repeat this. It was on the air what Don said to my dad. But, uh, but just like stuff like that. Yeah. It's just like little nuggets of information. Mm -hmm. It's just fun to listen to and get a better understanding of what how the game was played back then. Well, I told you today. that story. I don't know if I, I said it on the air ever, but I used to be a drop-and-drive pitcher. You see that a little bit even with J.C. driving towards the plate. I used to bang my knee on the dirt of the mound. And before four or five starts, my knee was black and blue and sore. So I went up to Tom Sieber, who was another one of those drop-and-drive pitchers. I said, what did you do to prevent your knee from being sore? And he goes, did you ever play basketball? I said, well, of course. Remember those white knee pads? Yeah. Put it right underneath your, your uniform pants, and that's all I ever use. I said, one of those $5 knee pads. <laughs> he goes, yep, and I, I bought one, and I used the same one. It didn't really necessarily smell real good after 13 years. <laughs> but I used the same one for my entire career, and it saved my kneecap. Just that little information. Peterson down, swinging for out number two. Third baseman number 11, Logan Forsythe. That's a pretty good comeback, falling behind 3-0, to be able to have that confidence. Then we sit about Keys, Bendelake Beckham, throwing a curveball to a left-handed batter. 
So that's what, you know, you know J.C. didn't really throw that at all until last year as a starter. He's gathering information from pitchers, starting pitchers. How do I get better? What do I use for an all-speed pitch? I'm not real comfortable throwing that split fin finger changeup. He said, try the curveball, and look what that does. Invaluable information from your peers or from players that used to play. And you're right, it doesn't have to be a Hall of Famer to right. get those information. It's from somebody that's either had a battle to get there and to stay there at the big league level. It's not easy to stay at the big league level. Ball on a strike now at Forsyth. I don't know if MLB Network still does it, but I know they did early on, especially when I first was there. They used to replay all these old games, just random footage mm -hmm. that they would find at different ballparks. Jerry Park in Montreal and just games. And uh, I, I think I wish you could see more of that kind of stuff just to, just, just to see how the game was built. Oh. Anytime you watch, you see a picture come up on Twitter from a, you know, from when the Angel Stadium was built. Yeah, yeah just, just fascinated by these things. Don't get me started on, on Ted Williams and Joe DiMaggio. I, I, I flat out asked, what would you look for against me? And they explained everything. I'm like, wait, did you ever even watch me? Pitch? I know exactly what you would throw every single count. And I knew if I was going to sit on a certain pitch against you, 1-2, two, 2-1, two, one, 3 one, all those things. And I'm like, you know, for them to say that and know and explain it, I learned so much. Yep. Four sides shooting one to center. Randall will stop at second. He's trying to get the baseball back in. So a couple of men on. With two outs for the Dodgers. A two on Angel lead. Kike Hernandez coming up. He's one of those times if you're J.C. Ramirez known to Kike Hernandez really is aggressive on a first pitch fastball. It's when you think in terms of maybe trying to break a ball right here but locating it well. He tried that slider, tried to get him to chase it. Oh, Renato's going to go out and pay a visit, a mound visit. You're going to see that a lot where you'll see, a, you know, a, an infielder come in there, too. There's only six visits to the mound during the course of the game on a non-pitching change. But I think that's the right decision there by Maldonado. That's back-to-back pitches, especially that last one. Just a refocus, J.C. Two zero, Kike skies with foul. Two balls, one strike. You don't think he was looking for a fastball there? I, do you? I think he was. I mentioned the mound visits, the new rule of baseball. Of course, umpires have to uh, notify the official score, both dugouts. That is number one of six. It will be kept track of on the scoreboards at each of the stadiums. It's one of those counts, too, for JC. You just have to trust your defense here. Go after him. Hope you get a nice defensive play made behind you. Bases are loaded. To uh, walk, Chris Taylor. Come to the plate. Charles Nagy's going to go out. Number three, Chris Taylor. Really the first time I've seen all spring where J.C. has 
struggled, especially with command of his slider. Fairly long conversation. Line toward left center field. That's going to fall in there. Two runs in. Hernandez racing to third. He's being waved around. Angleton Simmons fires it to the plate. A good throw, and they got him. Kike Hernandez comes up, saving, waving safe. Dave Roberts might take a look at it, and I'm sure they will. So two runs in for sure. It's a 3-2 Dodger lead. Dodgers! Certainly the throw looked like it beat him. Relay in, Anderson Simmons, the long throw, the one hop perfect throw. They're See this challenge. angle, a little bit different. Well, he might have got that hand on, did he actually get the hand on the plate? Looks like he did from that angle. Well, it's a tough one. So the call at the plate is out. It's being challenged. It's tough to tell from that angle, but I think the previous angle looked as if maybe the hand got there because the tag was up more towards the shoulder. Yeah, it's just a matter of did he get the hand on the plate. It's at the plate. Looked like he did right, right there. I think he might get that overruled. And not an easy play at all for Maldonado reach it back like that. See, that one, that angle there almost, you could, you could argue that the the glove maybe grazed the hand before it touched the plate, but the preview has looked like maybe the hand got in there. Kike felt like he got in there. Very quickly came up. That's a perfect one-off throw for Madison Simmons. Yeah. Seen a number of games this spring where the relays been fantastic for the Angels. We talked about this defense and, and defensive runs saved. You see that a lot this season for the Angels. Reach it back. Did he get grazed the arm before the hand got on the plate? I thought from a couple different angles, I thought Hernandez did get the hand in before the tag was applied. Still a very solid play by Maldonado, too. You have to give that clear path to the plate for the runner, catch it, and then reach back and apply a tag all in one motion. Maldonado is one of the best in the game as far as doing that. We saw that a lot last year. We saw it a number of times already in spring. So not enough of a definitive angle to uh, to make the call or to overturn the call, so it will stand. Two runs in for the Dodgers. A little rally for uh, Los Angeles, and it's the Dodgers three, Angels two as we hit on the third. This spring, come on, get.
Cheers. Halos here in the uh, third inning against Ryu. We'll have the top of the order. And Cozart Trout and Upton. We welcome in the veteran of our broadcast team, Jose Moda. The what? What? The what? Yeah. Bet, bet you heard right. The old guy. The old guy. <laughs> no, better. I prefer to say veteran. Old guy would be Gooby, I believe. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> hey, what have you seen from uh, from J.C. Ramirez, especially in that last inning? Things kind of got away from him just a little bit. Great view I had here on the side. Release point, elbow not driving where it needs to be, and perhaps a hand not being in a good spot to release the baseball. You can see sometimes, Victor, he was overthrowing the breaking ball. You can see he got a little flatter there. And, uh, you know, Dodger Sitters got one taste of that and uh, took advantage of it. Yeah, and Jose, we didn't see that at all in spring training. JC threw the ball exceptionally well for the most part every single time he took the mound. I think we saw a guy perhaps just trying a little bit too hard to make it all very fine here in his last start of the preseason. No doubt in your mind, Jose, he's in that rotation because it's better suited for him than potentially down in the bullpen. I think it's too dangerous. Uh, you take too many chances knowing what he's coming from, you know, being shut down to stem cell treatment. He um, he and Garrett Richard really clicked off, and Garrett was a big support of him as to what to expect and going through that uh, whole process. Leave him in one spot, bouncing back between the rotation and the bullpen would not be the most healthy thing, in my opinion. I agree with you on that one, Jose. Another great relay by the Angels there, too. Once again, we saw that on display a number of times already in camp. Out to center field, the leadoff single for Zach Cozart. Keeps doing his thing this spring. So consistent. Same swing every single time up, Mark. I mean, another base hit. With two strikes on him too, it's just, he, there's no panic at all, Jose. Even if he's behind in the count, you're right. Every single time, you're getting that timing mechanism down, and just through the baseball on a consistent basis. One very noticeable thing, Victor, is he is after Mike Trout, the one angel that can allow the ball to get so deep, as you can saw there, just right off that front leg. Pretty, uh, pretty impressive. Last night we did the split screen. Good, we was talking about the change that Kozart made. Last year, just the, the slight little difference late in spring training. And you know how uh, that all goes as far as confidence is concerned. You feel good. You get a, you get a hit here, a hit there. And all of a sudden, things snowball for it, and that's exactly what happened to Kozar, and he's just carried it over. He's a good listener, apparently, right? So when <laughs> Joey Votto speaks, you listen. <laughs> you put it to work, and he really knew how to apply it in BP he said and it took him a couple days from not thinking about the hands where are my hands where's my rhythm to just saying bat on the back shoulder react let the ball get there and throw the barrel but you know it says something about the individual who's willing to just say well what I've been doing for whatever amount of weeks in spring training isn't working the season's about to start Eh, I'll try it and just say what the heck and just go ahead and try it and go with it that, that, that says a lot about the guy because a lot of guys will just say I'll stick with what I've, I've done so far and hopefully things will even itself out as the season progresses but not not Kozar. That's a very good point because especially during spring training the one thing you don't want to be doing is tinkering as you're getting to the finish line right to get into the season but he, he had over 330 against lefties he stayed in so nicely as you just saw there and his home run went from what 16 tops to 24. And the splits is what I like the most. It wasn't because he was playing in Cincinnati. I mean, the splits were pretty much even right down the middle. Breaking ball, a little flare out to right field. That'll fall in for a hit. Cozart is going to turn. He's going to try to go to third. A throw from Puig is cut off. So back-to-back -back singles for the Angels to start the third inning. And, Jose, going back to that point, explain how difficult it is as a hitter to make those type of changes. You talked about it. Yesterday in the pregame show, we brought it into the game with Shohei Otani with his stride. How hard is that to do that? Have to have mentality, as Victor said. And as we see another Mike Trout swing, staying back, ball deep, fighting it off, best player in the game, doing his thing. But it's not easy. You've got to convince yourself that even if you're hitting 280 during spring or 200, you have to be able to understand just to sustain throughout a season what's going to take. And got to be very open minded and, of course, have the ability to. Uh, have the coordination with the bat. Here's up to we'll pop it up. Hernandez going out into the outfield grass calls off Puig. One down. 
talking about Albert Pujols, and we've been pointing out that he said in spring training, pull happy is not how I want to go into the season. Now, he said more balls hard to the left side, and here's what we saw. This got him going out before this, Mark, as you know very well, too. He asked, we saw last night against the lefty, but before this got going with a swing, he asked Mike Sosha, I need some at-bats in the minor leagues. Talk about a Hall of Famer here. He went down and had like 15 at bats combined in two days just to get things better with his balance. And you've got to be very pleased now with 11 RBI cold tie for the Angels. And suddenly you see a guy like Pujols make an adjustment like that is a great example for the rest of the guys. Well, when you think about it, Jose, how many opportunities he's going to have to drive in runs with the hitters in front of him this season? Think about that. Now you got, of course, Upton, who's on base machine. Always have Trout, and now Ian Kinsler. And all real good base runners, too, so a lot of times they're going to be in scoring position when they get on the base. So in other words, it's not just going to take a base hit. So Albert, like this situation here, he's got to be thinking, the less I can get away from the pull side at this point, unless it's hanging, the better off I'm going to be. 2 0. Right back inside. But as a pitcher, you're trying to pitch it inside to take away that barrel of the bat, try to get it on the handle. So were you last week under the different lights. They weren't as shiny back in Glendale, weren't they? No. <laughs> I remember that one well. It was hard to pick up that breaking yes. ball. Goodness. I remember that night, I'm thinking, you know what? Uh, I think I might be able to get an inning in. <laughs> Pretty good little cut fastball underneath the hands of Albert Pools from Ryu. Back to back singles by Kozart and Trout. Up to popped out on the first pitch. 2 2 count on Albert. Simmons on deck. I think he went around. No. Gary Davis says he did not go. Jose, did he go? Yeah, you got a good view there, Jose. <laughs> um, you know, I was I was looking at the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> well, here you go. Look at the monitor. See, that's a, vet, yes, see, you, that, that's that, a veteran call. Hey, that would have been a ground ball to third. Yeah. Dave Roberts still fuming in the other dugout. He came out of the dugout pretty much with a top step. Still fuming out there. He said they would have called that against me. I would imagine he's got to go right back with that next pitch. Trout on the move. Takes off. This one's out toward right center. Playable for Peterson. Gozart back to third. He'll tag and come home. Sack fly, and the Angels have tied this one up at three. So, Jose, I, want to, is. I want to ask you this right now. You'll see Lake, we, we watch Bellinger with two strikes. Well, he's still thinking, driving the ball out of the ballpark. Same thing with Corey Seager. Albert Pujols has been an RBI machine his whole career. You shorten up enough where you're trying to get the job done. Am I right or wrong on that one, Jose? We were just talking about that. Look at the swing he took on the check swing, of course, which was a little too antsy, going out front to saying, if he throws that pitch again, I better be in a better position to strike the ball and stay up the middle. Well, even though he does get beat just a little bit by that fastball, it's great situational hitting. That's how the machine does it year in and year out. I know the RBI gets uh, or has been devalued, if you will, by uh, by certain individuals in the uh, sabermetric world, over, especially over the last uh, several years. But I think if you ask Albert what his most impressive number is and what uh, milestone, while 3,000 is great, 600 home runs is fantastic, he loves, always has loved the RBI. Uh -huh. It's uh, the ability to get the guy home to give your team an opportunity to win the game. That's, that's how he looks at it. Think about how unique that is. How many guys have over 2,000 RBIs in the history of the game? Simmons out in front. Seager calling for it. Cozy, we'll talk about that when we return. The Angels tied up on the sack fly by Albert Pujols. In the bottom of the third, 3-3 game.
little bit as far as command in the second inning. See what he can do. Gave up a home run in the first inning. Final spring tune-up for JC. And it's good to see him uh, back to where he was last year prior to the injury. Seeger, Puig, and Bellinger, 2-3-4 for the Dodgers. Just see what fouls this one off. Jose, we were talking about uh, RBIs. Yes. And Albert Pujols going to break. And I'd, uh, I know uh, the pop-up obviously ended uh, your thought. But uh, go ahead and finish what you were talking about as far as the uh, runs batted in. Well, following up on your point. <laughs> one thing we know is you got to be, you know, encouraging the guys who high on base percentage for a reason, right? They represent runs for you. And there's no way in which you're going to be counting on somebody to not have the ability year in and year out to drive them in. So that's where I think Albert's so valuable. Forget the average. The home runs will be there on and off. But this guy knows how to drive in and run. So if you're going to be encouraging guys throughout the minor leagues, get on base, get on base, there's a reason why. Well, because he wants to score more runs. Well, somebody in your lineup has to have the ability somehow, not just with base hits, to drive him in. And that for the Angels is Albert. I remember having a conversation with a pretty good run producer himself back in the day, including a walk-off World Series winning home run and Joe Carter. I asked him what's, what was the one most important stat he would put up each and every year? RBI. When you look at his batting average, not necessarily the highest. Home runs were there, but it was all about RBI. He hit a sack fly, a ground ball that was second base, whatever it took to get him in. Broken bat little flare to Simmons. It's an out. He lost the ball in the transfer. Now Seager's off the base. He's going to get doubled up here. That's going to be a double play. Seager thought that he was going to take second base with the baseball dropping out of the glove, but the uh, third base umpire immediately called out because Simmons lost the baseball on the Dave transfer. Roberts was an hand. explanation here also. And so often when we're looking at it at the image, you wonder if he was planning that. But that was not a, a planned play by Anderson Simmons. And Seeger drifted off the base and is tagged out. Yeah. Double play. He just never looked at the umpire, never got confirmation of the out. Let's play the game, man. Don't be an umpire, just play the game. And Simba's always looking for that one out. Somehow. By the way, Jose, have you ever seen anybody with instincts no. like Anderson Simmons? <laughs> I have not. I mean, you see some great short stuff through the years, even growing up, Victor, as you and I did too, but my goodness, the instinct, just the ability to find a way where there's sometimes there's not a way for anybody just regularly playing shortstop. All right, Jose, I know there's two outs at Bellinger's at the plate, but uh, there's some decisions to be made as far as the Angels' roster is concerned. Your thoughts on that? Well, one thing is Jeffrey Marte getting a look today against a lefty, and um, his versatility at first and third is going to help. He's out of options. Chris Carter, I think, is a great fit for this team. He is on a minor league deal. Felix Pena has thrown the ball so well, and he's going to have a tough time cracking. But I think for sure, you know, one guy that should be very valuable to the Angels, Noah Ramirez, he's out of options. And to me, he's got to have a spot in that bullpen. Carlos Perez, decision on him. There's teams have been following him for the last 10 days or so and he could be catching for somebody as you know as soon as uh, this next weekend and just must make a decision on him out of options and a finalist for the gold glove just two years ago well isn't this great to be able to have that type of depth you know we haven't seen that in quite some time with this angel organization jose so a guy like carlos provides also value in case the angels are looking for something here towards the end Half-hearted swing over to Val Buena. Jose, we appreciate it. Nice job as always. My friend, hasta luego. Hasta luego. <laughs> we head to the fourth inning. 3-3 three, three game here at Dodger Stadium.
referee. Cole Calhoun to lead things off. Engine Ryu. 57 pitches through his first three innings. One strikeout, no walks. And five hits allowed. Cole with a base hit and a run scored in the second. using that cut fastball and slider combination quite a bit. Pitch initially starts in the inner half of the plate, cuts towards the outside part against Cole Calhoun. Cole's been very good as far as hitting the ball hard the other way. Two balls, two strikes. Marte on deck, then Valbuena. Both teams with five hits. And the one thing for Cole, as the season going to progress, especially with all the scouts looking at what he has done in spring training, in a lot of baseballs the other way, he'll get pitched inside a little bit more. And that's going to allow him to turn on baseballs and drive it out the right field, the right center field eventually. That's what you look for, some mistakes on the inner half. Is that off-speed pitch. Been pretty good neutralizer for him so far tonight. Take a look at my Hyundai key for the game tonight, going with the fix. One thing leads to another. And with the Mike Socia's club right now, the solid defense, we saw that on display, goes to that very good situational hitting. That has been on display and solid pitching. Put those three things together, all of a sudden, this is a very, very good team, team that could do a lot of damage. Marte with a single. And an RBI of the second inning. One ball, one strike. You never know what's going through the mind of a guy that's out of options. You're not sure what the team is going to do. You bring in, uh, if you're Jeffrey Marte, all of a sudden you see Chris Carter is there. This one's nubbed on the left side. It's Kike Hernandez with the shift on, throwing it out. Two outs. You can't control that kind of stuff. You just know that, look, you're going to be playing baseball one way or the other, right? So it's either going to be in the big leagues with this team, or it could be in the big leagues with another team, or at the very least, the minor leagues with another team. Yeah, and that's why you can't press. you got to go out and perform. The mindset has to be, especially when you're you're one of those players that's, Borderline, are you going to make the team or not? If you perform, you're going to be in the big leagues somewhere. But if you struggle in those situations and you get sent down, you know, then then all of a sudden the mind games come into play. You always have to think in terms of I can only control what I can do best, and that's putting the ball in play as a hitter, hitting the ball hard, playing some solid defense. And Marte's been pretty solid this spring. Oh, a shot by Valbuena going the opposite way with two outs. Reached on a fielder's choice in the second. Now singles here in the fourth. And it'll bring up Martin Maldonado. And he's Valbuena. Maldonado. Take a look at our Kia drive to success. Pre-All-Star game. You see the batting average, slugging percentage, RBI. Not where he wanted to be, but post-All-Star game. 16 home runs, 42 RBI, slugging percentage. 546. That's home run total. Only Mike Trout had more after the All Star break at 17. And again, you got to remember with Luis Valbuena, he was hurt to start the season. So the timing wasn't there at the plate. Batting average wasn't where he wanted to be, but the home run power, especially in the second half, solid for Luis Valbuena. Maldonado well, 0 for 1.
No balls, two strikes. Career highs for Maldonado across the board. For his full season as an everyday guy. Oh, two. Cue toward first, and it'll go foul. Just beyond the reach of Kike Hernandez and out to right field. Stopping at second base is Val Buena. So the Angels with back to back knocks. That's a real impressive at bat for Maldonado behind in the count. Stay back, let that baseball travel deeper in the strike zone and lines it just over the head of Kike Hernandez at second. He was looking to hit the ball that way. His eyes track that lower part of the strike zone and lines it over his head the other way. Good piece of hitting for Machete. Chris Young's going to pinch in for Zach Cozart. Cozart finishes spring schedule with the Angels. One for two tonight. And he'll shoot this one out toward left center field. Peterson going to his right, tracks it down, ends up on his belly. And he hauls it in for the third out. So the Angels get a couple men on with two outs. Leave them stranded. We hit at the bottom of the fourth. It's a 3-3 game. Night. He's been named the number three starter in the Angels rotation, thus going Saturday afternoon against the Oakland Athletics. And he is kind enough to join our very own Alex Curry from the Angels dugout. Alex. Thank you, Victor. Yeah, Matt, it's official. You're going to be taking the ball game three in Oakland, coming off a dominant final tune-up last night here at Dodger Stadium. What can that do for your confidence heading into the season? Yeah, you know, it's, it's always a confidence builder, you know, but we want to, you know, go out last outing uh, and get ready for the season. Like I said, go out there, compete. Execute pitches and get ready from there. Little different pitching in Arizona here at California. Uh, definitely a little different. Yeah, definitely. Now, the way last season ended for you, what can a game like this do? Where's your confidence level at? Are you feeling 100%? Are you happy where your mechanics are at and everything? Oh yeah, very much so. Like I said, I mean, you use spring to get ready. I mean, you come in ready physically, um, but you're you know you're going out there trying to get your pitches down, execute. Um, but yeah, like I said, you go out there. I feel great, ready to go. Um, Matt Kemp has put the uh, Dodgers back on top 4-3 with a solo home run to start this fourth inning. Now, Matt, you made a slight adjustment to your mechanics this spring. How has that helped you? 
You know, just uh, like I said, you're always trying to make little adjustments, um, and you try to find things that really stick. And when you find something that sticks, it just you know helps you execute. Um, for me, you know, trying to be in line with the catcher, you know, or keep my front side back, all those things definitely help. Now, when we talked to Garrett Richards on Sunday, he mentioned that there's a real sense of community between all of you guys. You're having a lot of fun. Is that because you guys have been together? so long you've been through so much together and you really know what it takes yeah you know that that time together definitely helps that just builds that relationship that builds a camaraderie um you know but we as as players as teammates as friends we all want to do that together we want to be that cohesive group go out there dominate um and, and feed off each other now, and you guys came into spring training with something you haven't had in years past and that was basically a set lineup a set roster a set starting rotation how did that make this spring different um, you know, we we really attack, attack spring as the same. Like I said, we're out there. We want we, as pitchers, we want to get our mechanics down. We want to get our pitches down. Um, so to be honest, it was pretty similar. Um, but like I said, we knew with that with our group of guys, we want to go out there and just have fun and win. And what do you think about having a six-man rotation? You know, it's, it's if, if it's going to be something that helps us get that extra rest and go out there and give our team a better chance to win because we're more prepared, our bodies feel better. Um, it's great. Like I said, we want to go out there and win. So whatever we got to do to go out there and win, you know, we're prepared to do it. Before we let you go, your beard is looking mighty fine right now. How long are we going to see it get this season? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. I don't even have an answer for you. Well, you know, uh, we'll see. Just let it grow, you know. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. Let it flow, Gooby and Victor. We'll just have to see how long it goes. His beard looks like Gooby's mullet back in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> that your beard looks like Gooby's mullet back in the 80s. <laughs> mullet, yes. <laughs> mullet. That's phenomenal. <laughs> Matt, thank you so much. Oh, gosh, I don't even know we're still out. I'm, 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 I'm in my head. I'm just like, man, that's got to be beautiful. Uh, well, I appreciate that, Shu. Thank you. Hey, no, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Grandal with a base hit to follow the uh, Kemp home run. Second hit of the night for Grandall. 52 pitches for J.C. Ramirez, and he'll face Jock Peterson. Couple of defensive changes for the Angels. Chris Young, who's uh, came up to the plate, batted for Zach Kozar, stays in the game in left field. Michael Emerson is in center field. Eric Young Jr. is out in right. Uh, Buena stays in at third. David Fletcher, the new shortstop. Nolan Fontana, the new second baseman. Martin Maldonado still in the game behind the plate. I think you might have a shot of seeing Shohei Otani get a couple of bats too in this game. Albert Pujols served as a DH. His night may be over also. Maybe see Shohei Otani. Shallow left center. Fletcher going out calling for it. One down. Angels bullpen. Luke Bard getting ready. It hasn't been a, a perfect night, obviously, for J.C. Ramirez on the mound, but what you try to do as far as gaining confidence is how you finish up this inning was very important for him. You got that pop up there. See if you can get a ground ball double play to be able to finish off the inning. The big thing when I look at J.C. tonight is not a great feel for his slider. And that's usually his go-to pitch where he can get an out via a ground ball or even a strikeout with that pitch. He's kind of forced it. Jose mentioned that earlier. You see him kind of muscling up, overthrowing his slider instead of just trusting the feel out in front. Ground ball over to third. You called for a double play. And uh, not going to get it. Took a little while to uh, turn, both from Valbuena and from Fontana. So you called it. You were right. <laughs> Just wasn't executed. 14. Two down. There's Kike Hernandez coming to the plate. 4 3 Dodgers. We're in the fourth. Nobody warming for the Dodgers. Luke Bard, who a five selection from the Twins organization, the guy that uh, the Angels need to make a decision he's, he's on as in well. The mix.
one thing you want to see J.C. work on a little bit better this season. Although around baseball, not as much base stealing. But you want to want to be a little bit more alert of base runners over first, holding the baseball throw over the first base. Susceptible because of his times to play to the stolen base. Certainly have a great catch with a great arm behind our gold glover, Martin Maldonado, but you want to give him a shot. And always, sometimes all you have to do as a pitcher is just hold the baseball. You stop the runner from gaining momentum on his lead. Pulled to left. Young gets it back into the infield, stopping at second his fourth side. I if that's going to be it for JC. Sure enough, Mike Sosha coming out, makes the call. That'll do it for JC Ramirez. Unable to get through four innings. Having allowed eight hits, two of which were home runs, solo shots by Puig and Kemp. Luke Bard will uh, come on. To try to finish off this fourth inning. We have ourselves a pitching change here at Dodger Stadium. The Dodgers leading it 4 3 to wrap up the freeway series. Now it's time for Tool of the Trade brought to you by Ram Trucks. The Dodgers trying to be aggressive on the base running, but the relay throws been outstanding. Cole Calhoun to Anderson Simmons, a perfect throw to Marte at third, gets the out. Mike Trout gets it in quickly. Anderson Simmons once again, that same theme, the run save, perfect throw to the plate. Tag applied by Martin Maldonado. That's what's so impressive about this Angels team, the ability to prevent runs especially on the relay. Anderson Simmons, one of the best in the game, but it all starts with the perfect throws from the outfitters, Cole and Trout. Luke Bard on the mound. There's his numbers between double-A AA, and triple-A last year in the Twins organization. 27-year-old native of Charlotte, North Carolina. Rule 5 selection this offseason from the Twins. The first one's outside. Bard, a first-round pick of the Twins out of Georgia Tech. 2012. 11th game with the spring, no record. ERA of 8.25. 12 innings, 10 strikeouts, four walks. Sharp slider, good fastball. When we talk about his fastball, the, the impressive thing about that is the spin rate on his fastball, four seam fastball. That certainly is a sharp slider just off the plate. 
The back to back breaking balls of Stryan. It's 2 0. Yeah, the incredible spin rate on his fastball gives the illusion of a, of a rising fastball. Mm -hmm. Forsyth at second, Hernandez at first. When you think about it, it's a pretty good test for him right now. Coming in this ball game with this lineup for the Dodgers. Couple on. Trying to turn that number 90 into a, a big league number. Stick with the big club. Like the Angels, the Dodgers hacking up there a 3-0. That's trust from both your managers to know the strike zone. Don't expand and chase something out of the strike zone if it's going to be a strike. Dave Roberts allowing Chris Taylor to hack at that pitch. It gives a lot of confidence to your hitters that your manager is going to do so. Full count. That's a nasty fastball. 92. Again, it's not the overpowering velocity, it's the location of that pitch. You would think you have an option right now because that fastball is right on the outside corner. Now you can try that slider. You can expand the strike zone. You might be able to get a swing and miss with that next pitch if you decide to go with a slider. Runners will take off here. 3 2 now. Taylor fouls it off. Quick conversation. There's the, the third visit of the game. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a hitter right now, when you see a pitcher wave out the catcher, I, I, I think I'm sitting something off speed. See if he changes that and goes with his fastball, but I would think he's going to throw a breaking ball. Called strike three. Got him on the inside part of the plate. And Bard gets the job done. One run in on the Kemp home run. Dodgers on top. 4 3 as we hit to the fifth.
ball and a perfect break ball it was to be able to finish off the inning against Chris Taylor at the dish and a little quick confidence booster too knowing as a young pitcher you're going with the catcher put down that slider to begin with shook it off maybe want to go fastball but Martin Maldonado the gold glover said stick with the plan and that's exactly what worked for him David Fletcher to lead things off for the Angels here in their half of the fifth I love what Martin did there too to get a young pitcher to that next level you have to have that ability to throw an all speed pitch in a in a fastball count three two generally hitters are thinking fastball and Martin says that let's go with that break a ball and the trust Bart had in his veteran catcher got him through the inning. Back over there, talking to the youngster again. Trying to get him to slow down the game, trust him. And we talk about that invaluable information you can gather. Fletcher reaching for this one. It's Farmer cutting out in front of Seeger. The off balance throw just got him. Then does he get down that line quick? Yeah. You're thinking base hit out of the batter's box. Farmer had to get a lot on that throw and just gets Fletcher at first. Just before he gets that foot down on the base, stretched out by Bellinger. A couple of changes for the uh, Dodgers. Mentioned Farmer over at third base, Chase Utley at second. Jock Peterson moves over to left. Gerald Kendall out in center field. Andrew Tolles in right field. Ballinger still at first. Grandall behind the plate. Here's Nolan Fontana. First plate appearance. Albert still on deck, so he wants at least one more plate appearance. Bonded by Fontana. Good one. Ryu off the mound. We're not going to get him. Heads up play by Utley to back up. There's a reason why Chase Hutley has been in the major leagues for a long time in position there to back up at an errant throw. Otherwise easy getting the second base in the scoring position. And Ryu gets off the mound quickly but an off balance throw is that throw in towards the runner. Bellinger no chance to catch that but backed up very well. Now if you're a youngster at home always remember to back up and protect your teammates just in case of an errant throw. And that's what Utley did. Here's Albert. He's popped down, had a sacrifice fly, picking up the RBI. Does it surprise you that Albert, as usual, would love to get that extra at bat? No, <laughs> not at all. He broke his bat, flips one out to right center. Stopping at second is Fontana. So two on with one out. Albert more than likely will be pinch run for, I would think. Yeah, that bat, it's still strong enough to be able to get it into the outfield towards the end of the bat and the break in the bat. But Albert pulls another base hit. Nice sacrifice fly his last at bat. Michael Hermosillo coming to the plate now. There's this one foul. Dino showing the hands on that play. Some things never change. No. <laughs> Reimer Liriano, by the way, is the pinch runner at first for Albert. Macio's numbers between the minor leagues last year, 23 years of age, 28th round pick out of high school, 2013. It's, it's, uh, it's one of one. 
Robert Liriano's has some talent himself. Saw him a number of games this spring. Running over at first base now for Albert Pujols. Takes that breaking ball in there. One and two. It's 84 pitches for Ryu. Nine hits for the Angels, eight for the Dodgers, but it's the Dodgers up by one. Just got a piece of it. And the final start of spring training for Ryu getting that pitch count up there that's what normally you would like to see from your starter the last start or the second to last get it up around 90 pitches or so and Lucio goes down swinging two down looks like that's going to be it for Ryu Eric Young Jr. due up and the left-hander is done in his last spring start well, that was three runs, and he'll depart with two outs here in the fifth. Both base runners belonging to him. A pitching change at Dodger Stadium. We're in the fifth inning with the Dodgers on top. Beginning on Monday, April the 2nd, and Tuesday, April the 3rd. Angels taking on the Cleveland Indians. Both start times at 7.07. .07. Fans in attendance will receive a wall calendar courtesy of U.S. Bank. For more information on that and more, just go to angels.com. Let's see what Eric Young Jr. could do here with two outs and two on. Well, E.Y. Jr. provided a lot of exciting times last year when he was called up. Some big hits. Brought a ton of energy. Two balls and no strikes. It's fun to watch. It's good to see that the Angels brought him back. Got Spores behind in the count here, 2 0. EY Jr. sitting fastball now. Out toward right field. It's playable for Tolls. Halos leave a couple of men on, and we'll head to the bottom of the fifth with the Dodgers still on top. Fresh made tostadas on El.
not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels Baseball LP. Bottom of the fifth inning, the Angels brought on right-hander Jaime Berea. The Angels' top prospects as far as starting pitchers are concerned. Three stops last year, seven and nine. ERA in the upper twos as he gets Seeger to cut through the first one. He'll face Seeger, Tolls, and Bellinger. Talk about a plus changeup. He has one. Seeger hits one out toward right center field. Hit very well. Hermosillo on the track will haul it in. One down. Right fielder, number 60. And Maria not oh. overpowering with his fastball. But he pitches inside very effectively to set up his changeup. Good breaking ball also. New catcher behind the plate too, Jose Bruceno. No other changes for the Angels. That we know of as of yet. Tolls with the solo home run in the ninth inning. Oh, Blake Parker last night. So far he's seen a 90, 92 mile an hour fastball. We know that change up. There it was. A little bit out of the strike zone. Going right back to it. See how good that is great action on the changeup. Differential about 10 miles per hour, 92 to 82. Fastball, changeup. Same arm action. 21 years of age. And down here goes. The wall gets away, though. And Tolls will reach. A strikeout wild pitch. That's a pretty good breaking ball. Stayed on top of that curveball very well. 12 to 6 break. That spin, very difficult for catchers. You try to get that glove down quick enough, anticipating a curveball in the dirt, but still gets away. <laughs> Ballinger's 0 for 2, a fly ball to center and a ground ball to third. One and two. Chase Utley on deck. Now it goes Bellinger. Two outs. I almost looked like Bellinger was trying to sit on his change up. Ran a fastball up and in. We were talking in, in between innings about that against Bellinger. I think you can get him out with a fastball, but it's got to be in or half or off the plate in and up. That's exactly what he did. He unable to bring his hands up and make contact. But if you go inside with a fastball, you better not let that drift out over the plate. That's going to go a long way. Yep.
Chase Utley. Gooby's favorite players of all time. Great walk-up song, by the way, too. 39 years of age. First round pick out of UCLA by the Phillies back in 2000. The Silver Fox, as they call him now. I'll shoot this one out towards center, and he'll fall in there. He's always had that short swing. It's almost, you know, a lot of times, whether you're a golfer or a tennis player or even a hitter, you would think that you get through the baseball, you create a little bit more backspin on it, but it just stops right through it. Almost like he stops on contact on his swing, but a consistent line drives throughout his career. Rutley doesn't even go all the way around on the swing. A lot of wasted motion in that attack of the baseball. Short stride. Hands through the baseball very well. That's some big years in that magical runs for the Phillies as they won the NL East a number of times, including World Championship in 2008. Austin Barnes pinch hitting in Grandall's spot. Desmondi went two for two with a couple of singles and a run scored. Tolls at second, Utley at first. Just the bottom of the fifth, 4 3, Dodgers. Looks like uh, some water on the warning track along the third base side. Sprinkler head or something. Well, let's call the game. Let's the spring training game. Let's all go home. <laughs> Everybody good? <laughs> Everyone's healthy. That's a lot of water over there. Yeah. Especially if there's a pop up in that area, it becomes a dangerous situation. All right towards that. Camera well also. Looks like there's water still pouring out of there, right? Well, yeah, quite a bit. Looks like it's starting to run down by the dugout as well. That didn't look good, buddy. No. It might be a little bit more than a broken sprinkler head. I'm telling you, this is the perfect opportunity in a spring training yes. game where you're looking over to the other manager, you wave. Give him the thumbs up and say, yes. good luck. <laughs> Take it on home. Well, you got to have to stop the water first before you put any diamond dry stuff on there, right? Yes.
That's Jerry Davis, the crew chief. Guys running everywhere. We think turning off a valve somewhere to be able to make sure that's some. That's that's still got water. Yeah. Yes. Question is which valve? <laughs> which valve do you, you shut off? No. Jerry Davis going over to uh, talk things over with Mike Sosha. Certainly would be an official game. The bottom of the fifth. Yeah. Yeah, because that whole official stuff really matters. Yes. <laughs> yes, thing, yes. It does. We see so many tie games. It still seems like there's water still coming out. And the Dodgers play their home opener, season opener against the Giants here in a couple days. Yeah, Thursday, they've got an off day tomorrow. And the squeegee's out. A few of those by your tennis courts at home, don't oh, you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is the water still pouring out, though? It looks like it is. And Just it a little like, bit, right? Yes. Right there, you can see. Again, is someone planning on turning off the valve? <laughs> General Manager Billy Epler talking with Soch. Well, it continues to it's drain bubbling out. up, right? Yes. The Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah. <laughs> it's bubbling up. <laughs> uh, we've got a uh, stoppage here. Well, they're hoping to have some stoppage on the water down there on the warning track, but uh, clearly a valve or something broke on the warning track by the camera well. Yeah. Outfield side of uh, the dugout on the Dodger side. And while they move the water down the track to try to have it blend in with the warning track, there's still water. Yeah, you can see that. seeping out there, so a lot. Now we've got all the officials on the, uh, on the field. Jerry Davis getting another explanation. I'd imagine this is stadium operations. <laughs> Meanwhile, many of the folks, fans, are just starting to say, you know, they're, they're taking our cue. It's Cactus League game. Let's go. Let's try to beat the traffic. All right, look at that. Yes. That's, yeah. yeah need some serious gorilla tape to stop that leak. Looks like they're going to walk off the field now, the Angels.
water still seems to be running yep. over there. Meanwhile, the Angels are in their dugout. I mean, they're pouring the, uh, you know, the drying agent on the warning track, but again, it's somewhat of a moot point. Yeah, until if you the can stop still the water still pouring out. Yeah. That's a good amount of water. Yes. I guess Alex Curry has just had a chance to talk with Mike Sosha. Alex, you with us? I am. I'm down here. What's up? Well, everyone's a little confused with what's going on here in the dugout, but Mike Sosha talked to the umpires. It is a sewage pipe that burst, Ouch. and it doesn't seem like it's slowing down anytime <laughs> soon right now. So everyone's just kind of walking around the dugout, not really knowing what's going to happen. They said they're going to try to clean it up if they can clean it up then maybe they'll be able to get back on the field, but everyone's just kind of in a, a holding pattern right now in the dugout. Oh. Well, I mean, if it's a pipe that's burst, aren't you, you're pretty much done, right? Especially a sewage pipe. There's not, it's not, it's not, it's not like it's a water valve you could just go shut off. Yeah, I think no, you have, you'll sewage. have to eventually have to dig into that dirt area oh. to do that. They made a joke, if, so, if everyone stops going to the bathroom here, yeah. maybe it'll stop, but yeah. I don't think that's gonna happen. Alex, we appreciate it as always, you're on top of it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> so there you have it. Apparently a uh, su sewage pipe has burst on the uh, morning track just outside the Dodger dugout. And uh, we'll see what they decide to do here, or try to do. And I know that uh, that's been an issue in uh, Oakland, Oakland at yes. the, uh, the visiting clubhouse a couple of times. Looks like they're going to go talk to Soch, maybe. Alfonso Marquez set it over there. Again, we're just kind of flying by the seat of our pants here. We're just uh, at the way. There's no, I mean, there's no real, it's not one of those rain delays where you see the rain stop and then you got 20 minutes to get the field ready. You know, the big concern has got to be about player safety at this point. If, you know, with all that water there, you got to wait and make sure it stops. And then it doesn't seem like that's the case yet. So see it bubbling there. Up from the ground came a bubbling crude. <laughs> Can you sing the song to entertain the fans now? I'm surprised they just haven't called this. I mean, it's a meaningless game. All the regulars are pretty much out of the game. Well, you know, they say in baseball that uh, there's always something that happens in a game that you've never seen before. Yeah, this is the first for me here. This would be, uh, yeah, an on-field delay with a sewage pipe breaking. See, sprinkle heads all of a sudden. Yeah, start to work during the course of the game. <laughs> I may or may not have <laughs> been one that <laughs> opened up a sprinkler head or two during a game. Yeah, yeah, you might want to do that occasionally when you're losing a <laughs> ball game. Yes, I can neither confirm nor deny that. Like Jerry Davis, the crew chief, was on a headset. He might be talking to Major League Baseball. Yeah. See, this is in the hands, if I'm not mistaken, it's in the hands of the umpires. I think so. 
a chance to talk to Jerry last night. He opens up his crew down in San Diego. We'll eventually see him in Anaheim. Throwing our home stand after going up to Oakland for four. Still see the water draining out. We're going to uh, step aside because we've pretty much exhausted everything we've got to say about the sewage pipe. We'll have more from Dodger Stadium when we return. Uh, well, I guess a suspended game is what they're calling it. And uh, we've been told it is a water main break specifically. And uh, still no decisions as to uh, what they're going to, to do here. It is still bubbling up. It is an official game. We are in the bottom of the fifth inning with the Dodgers up four to three. So, uh, I mean, it's one of those things you could just uh, take it on home and it's a W for the Dodgers if that were the to be the case but uh, we still don't know there's still a lot of communicating going down on the field out in front of the Dodgers dugout a lot of guys on their phones but still uh, the water continues to uh, to bubble over and so we're uh, sitting it out here it's not easy to turn off when you have a pipe like that it breaks in water mean it's very difficult it's going to continue the dream for quite a while that's and that, that's kind of my point is you know, if, if you knew where that exact pipe was at, maybe you could jump down. 
not Roto Rooter or anything by any stretch of the imagination. We usually call somebody for that. <laughs> Go to Angie's list. But uh, that's what I would figure would be the case. That's such an odd spot for that to happen right there uh, on the warning track out in front of the Dodger dugout. Two outs and a couple of men on. The, uh, we saw Jerry Davis call timeout. We saw the water on the track. And then all of a sudden we saw the uh, the water main, the, the bubbling of it. And there was uh, plenty of water. And they continue to squeegee and move it down the warning track so it just doesn't puddle up right there. But that's all they can kind of do until they're able to shut that valve off somehow. And then at that point, you still have got to prep the, the warning track area and make sure that's ready to go. So you're talking at least 15 minutes. 10, 15 minutes after you get that done to get that track ready. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we're just kind of uh, sitting it out here, trying to figure out what they're uh, eventually going to do, as is Billy Epler in the dugout and the rest of the Angels. Everyone's just sitting in their respective dugouts, so uh, watching this play out live. Many of the fans have started to uh, depart. Some have hung out here. Remember, keep in mind, season opener here just a couple days away. Make sure it looks in great shape. Giants coming into town. That is still running a lot. Yeah. Depart tomorrow afternoon to go to Oakland for that day game on Thursday. The stop is so, so far we have been uh, through a 21 minute delay. This all occurred at 8.56 and currently 9.17. And this is an official game, even though it's a spring training game. It is an official game, being with the Dodgers leading in the bottom of the fifth inning. Now, if it was the other way around, the Angels leading four to three, the bottom of the fifth would not be an official game until you finished off this bottom of the fifth. We'll see it running. We're stepping away once again, and uh, hopefully we have uh, some information when we return. 4-3 Dodgers, we are in a delay, a suspended game here at Dodger Stadium.
A couple of men on and two outs, some uh, a water main break happening in the uh, warning track area just outside the Dodgers dugout. And uh, it doesn't appear like it's going to be fixed anytime soon. So, I think that Mike Sosha and Dave Roberts conversing together towards the home plate area. I think they may be. That's Stan, Stan Caston. Stan Caston there. And who runs the Dodgers organization. I wouldn't be surprised if they decided in the best interest of both teams and the players and the fans here that uh, call this one off. Now they're getting together with Jerry Davis, the crew chief, and the rest of the umpiring crew. That red broom is that is where the uh, water continues to seep out of that broken pipe. And still running. Yeah. Grounds crew's done a nice job of at least clearing that water down the track to keep it from puddling up and actually going into the Dodger dugout. They poured the, uh, the drying agent all along the Dodger dugout in front of it. This uh, delay occurred on We're in a holding pattern, folks. We're trying to get as much information as possible for you, and uh, not much forthcoming other than the fact that we're still in a suspended game, and uh, still just a lot of uh, a lot of conversations going on on the field. We're going to step away for a moment.
umpire and crew, the manager still talking things over and still no decision has been made as of yet, although maybe there has been now. Socia is heading back toward the, uh, the dugout area. They may have gone ahead and uh, bang this game. Where everyone's moving around, especially with the umpires going towards the dugouts, it may indeed be yeah, called I think off now. That, that looks to me like a sign that they are going to call it. Looks like Jerry Davis getting on the headset to talk to uh, New York and uh, Major League Baseball. You'll know here uh, momentarily if you see guys heading toward the clubhouse, and it looks like they are. So Mike Sosh and the guys are going to take it on home. It looks like this game is going to finally be called because of this water main break that they're unable to, uh, to fix. We await the official word, but it's a pretty good indication right there. Guys are uh, packing things up and taking it on home. Let's go down to Alex Curry. Alex. Thank you, Victor. Now, Dino, you see a lot of strange things happen in baseball. You've spent 18 years in the minors, 13 years in the big leagues. Have you ever seen anything like this? Well, the only time I can recall is back in the minor leagues. It was a long time ago in, uh, in, in uh, lower A ball, but uh, this is crazy. Now, you know, it's something you can't control. It's something to do with the city, with the water, but uh, we were talking over there with all the players and stuff like you see in the minor leagues, but uh, you know, it's uh, this is what it is. You got to deal with it. So what what have you been told? What did you hear Mike Sosha say as he walked into the dugout? Well, I don't think they officially said it, but I think he just told our players that they're going to go ahead and uh, suspend the game or cancel the game because they can't they can't get it to stop. It's something to do with the city. They tried they they tried their best to get it to to you know to knock the water out, but it didn't happen. Funny way to end spring training, but when you look at everything as a whole, are you guys ready for opening day? We're ready. So uh, it was a good night tonight. Everybody got their work out, work in, and uh, you know it's a, it's a it's a new season and uh, long long spring training, and we're ready to go. Good to get everyone home, get some rest, and get ready for Oakland. Yes, we're uh, we're going to be heading out tomorrow, and uh, can't wait till opening day. All right, thank you, Dino. Thank you. Victor and Gooby, back up to you guys. Alex, we appreciate it. This game has been called officially because of the water main break, unable to get the thing taken care of. And so this one ends by the final of 4-3, to three, thus sending the Cactus League season. Gooby, nice job tonight, buddy. You too, Victor. You know what? I'm excited about this season. Can't wait for Thursday afternoon. Hopefully they'll be able to get this all rectified here at Dodger Stadium. They have a big opening series himself against the Giants. So baseball. Yep. It's a day and a half away from starting up. It's, uh, let's get it on. Yes. They say, Let me hear right? you sing. Come